Hey everybody, Jeff Miller here, head of GMAT instruction for Target Test Prep. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to prepare effectively for the data insights section of the GMAT. So you may be wondering, what is tested on the data insights section of the GMAT? Well, data insights is now a third of the GMAT since the GMAT has changed from the classic to what they call GMAT focus to which now they'll be reverting back and just calling it the GMAT. In any case, the data insights section has data sufficiency questions, which was a new change. And then it took all of the old integrated reasoning questions, graphics interpretation, two-part analysis, table analysis, and multi-source reasoning. That is what makes up the data insight section of the GMAT. So let's talk about some ways on how to best prepare for that section. Let's talk about data sufficiency. Data sufficiency on the GMAT now consists of some, a lot of quants still and some verbal. So what's a great way to study for the majority of the data sufficiency you'll see? It's to do it along with quant. So what we've done in target test prep is we haven't moved our quant data sufficiency stuff to the data insight section, because remember, you're still being tested on quant skills. When you see a divisibility data sufficiency question, it makes sense to learn it along with all the number property stuff you're doing. When you see a ratio data sufficiency question, again, it makes sense to learn it in ratios. For all of the verbal-based data sufficiency stuff, yes, you can learn that later on. You can either learn it along with the verbal stuff you're dealing with, or you can learn it along with the IR type questions, the graphing table type questions that you're dealing with in data insights. But in general, don't save data sufficiency for the data insights learning in your preparation. The quant-based stuff should still be learned with all the math and all the problem solve you're doing, hopefully earlier on in your prep. Now let's talk quickly about the IR style of data insights questions. As we said earlier, graphics interpretation, table analysis, two-part analysis, and MSR multi-source reasoning. Those questions you want to do at the end of your prep, and there's a very good reason why. What you're learning in quant, what you're learning in verbal, is going to help build a level of foundation that then gets applied to those questions. For example, in a two-part analysis question, you may have to deal with three-part ratios. You may have to deal with weighted averages. You may have to deal with the good old equation trap of two variables in one equation. That stuff you're learning in quant, so there's no sense in dealing with those questions early on in your prep. Get the skills you need through quant and verbal, and then I'm telling you, learning and dealing with the other question types and data insights outside of data efficiency will be that much easier, and you'll be that much more prepared to deal with them at that point in your prep. When we're talking about the order in which you learn those IR question types, well, what's smart? a smart way to do it? Learn your graphics interpretation and learn your table analysis before doing MSR. Now, there's a reason for that. MSR questions, as you probably have seen, if you practice anyway, any of them, there's a lot going on in those questions. They have tables and they also have graphs. So you wanna get very skilled at dealing with graphs and dealing with tables before dealing with a complex MSR question. So for that reason, save MSR, I just say do it at the end because I would take all of the knowledge you've learned up to that point and then apply it to MSR. But for sure, do graphics interpretation, do table analysis at a bare minimum before doing any MSR. Another important point about the data insight section as a whole, minus the data sufficiency questions, is you wanna start doing a lot of topical practice. We talk about this a lot for math. We talk a lot about for verbal, but it's also the case to study that way for the data insight section. And when I say topical practice, I mean, when you get into graphics interpretation, study just that topic, because there's a lot of different graphs you have to be able to deal with in graphics interpretation that you gotta get familiar with. You gotta be able to deal with bar graphs, line graphs, pie charts even. So you have to be in a place where you feel like you know how to evaluate those graphs and evaluate them quickly. And the only way to get there is to do a bunch of bar graphs, to do a bunch of line graphs, et cetera. Because remember, that's only one part of dealing with graphics interpretation. After you can deal with the graphs, then you have to deal with the math that's based on the graphs. And you'll start to see some repeating patterns of what's tested. There's a lot of ratios. There's a lot of statistics. There's a lot of percents. And the same kind of concepts go for table analysis, for example. Table analysis is about, well, are you skilled at being able to properly sort the table? 
Well, the only way you're going to develop that skill is if you do a lot of practice on it. And then are you good at finding medians? Are you good at finding averages, ratios, etc.? You can rinse and repeat this process for two-part analysis and, and MSR as well. But when you get into that insights, don't think, well, now I'm just going to practice a ton of different questions. Don't do it. Stick to your topical practice. Eventually, yeah, you'll do mixed problem sets the way that we suggest doing it in quant, in verbal. But to start, topical practice of graphics interpretation, same thing with table analysis, same thing with two-part and same thing with MSR. So in summary, when you're dealing with the data insights section on the GMAT, as we said, start with quant and verbal first. And when you're doing quant, do all the data sufficiency quant stuff that you'll see in data insights. You can save the verbal data sufficiency till you do other data insights questions. That's part one. Also, as we just said, get through quant and verbal first, then get in data insights. As I said earlier, the reason for that is you're, you're developing the skills you're going to use for data insights eventually in quant, in verbal. Once you get there, topical practice, right? All graphics interpretation, all table analysis, all uh, two-port analysis, and all MSR. And finally, save MSR for the end of your data insights prep because it's taking things you learn in graphics interpretation. It's taking things that you're learning in table analysis, and it's applying them to those question types as well. And remember, Data Insights is now a third of the GMAT. So it's something you got to take seriously. It's something you got to work hard on. But if you can follow all the advice we give you in these videos, including this one today, I guarantee you, you can knock Data Insights out of the park. All right, that concludes today's video. I had a blast talking to you about strategies on how to prepare for the Data Insights section of the GMAT. Hopefully you've been able to make gain some great takeaways from this video that you can apply to your own prep. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to our channel, leave comments of future videos that you want us to do. I trust me, I want to do as many videos that can help everybody out here. I do thank you for watching, study hard, and I look forward to talking to everybody soon.